Hey guys, Ron here, and some of the legendary Pokemon are some of my favorite assortment of Pokemon in the franchise. A fan-made term for Pokemon with three stages and exactly 600 base stat totals. They're usually on the team of important trainers like the Champion and command an inspiring presence. These are Pokemon everyone wants on their team, but for some reason, Game Freak only has a set image for pseudo-legendaries. Pretty much all of them are draconic, except for Metagross and technically Tyranitar. But Fakemon artists online always manage to fill in the gaps in Game Freak's creativity. What if there were pseudo-legendary Pokemon to fit into every single Pokemon type. Usually I would make all the Pokemon in the video myself, but I'd never in my right mind make 18 three-stage evolutionary lines, at least for free. So since I can't make 54 Pokemon in one week, I decided to showcase the coolest pseudo-legendaries I could find from across the internet. Learn from the best and then make my own pseudo-legendary Pokemon. That's right, since behind the scenes I'm in the middle of production of my next Fakemon region, I want to make myself two pseudo-legendary lines. One that conforms to the existing uh, pseudo-legendary lines that Game Freak has made, and one that totally does not. So make sure to subscribe to see the development of this region. Keep in mind that it's super tough to find pseudo-legendary Fakemon online. Sure, there are tons of amazing three-stage Fakemon to see, but I specifically collected the Fakemon that were intentionally made to be pseudo-legendaries. When you're done with this, make sure to check out my previous Fakemon videos, since a bunch of the Pokemon I made over the last year will be part of my region. And all the links to the Fakemon you'll see today are in the description too. Now I'm gonna jump around through types. So how about we start with the most overutilized type for pseudo-legendaries before getting a bit unconventional conventional. Dragon. Yeah, we have enough Dragon pseudo-legendaries and there are gonna be a bunch more in the video, just coupled with new types that Game Freak hasn't used. But the Graffiti Souls Armadrak line for Pokemon Rearmed is pretty realistic. You'll notice Ice type is pretty popular among the secondary pseudo-legendary Fakemon types, especially since snowy environments are associated with the late game. But as a Viking-based Pokemon, this totally works. Snowdra was actually converted from an AI-generated Pokemon, so it's not the most spectacular Fakemon ever. But the progression of the line feels natural, and Armadrak itself is exactly the type of pseudo I see Game Freak making. I love its potential relationship to Lapras too, and its face is incredibly rendered. Perfect amount of details as well. But how about we move on to a type that we haven't seen in this group yet. Electric. Check out Tubbs AZ's Mishi Bugway line from the Mojavo region, based on the Mishi Biju basically an underwater panther. A mythical water being among many indigenous uh, northeastern Americans, especially around the Great Lakes. They are extremely powerful and an amalgamation of large cats and horned animals like bison. All of this, as well as the creature's ability to cause storms, is perfectly translated into Pokemon form in this uh, evolutionary line. Mercury is incredibly cute, a unique mix of cat and fish, I believe. Meyer Malkin is a great example of an unconventional middle stage for some pseudo-legendaries. And finally, Mishi Bugway is exactly the kind of pseudo most fans want to see. It's still a dragon type, but at the very least deviates from the established design trope. It looks more powerful than the average Pokemon, while not being as complicated as the standard legendary. I'll take that to heart when I make my own. Fighting. We have Komo O that exists, but we're going through every type today. Billaboss is a great honorable mention. I love how the camouflage patterns is made up of scars, but as good as it is, this is far from the Aussie artist's uh, best work. So my pick for fighting is Chuprador by Tusku for the Mithra region. While it's a dragon type for its Chimera-esque design, this is the most unique concept for a pseudo on the internet. I love how it goes from Chihuahua with possible Alebrije or Piñata traits to Chupacabra Chihuahua to Chihuahua Chupacabra Luchador. It's a subtle yet somehow complex progression that culminates in a fun looking Pokemon with tons of personality. I'm glad I found it. Rock. Tyranitar is tough to beat, and Bromo Jumbo's Borogon is an honorable mention, but I'm sure by now you want to see something new. Finally, we have a non-dragon type with Sciastrix from Pokemon Flux, a gem-clad griffin with a beard I, f I find very endearing. It's hard and fluffy at the same time, pink and brown, full of so many contrasting elements. That's how you make a striking Pokemon, I believe, and its majesty fits in with other pseudos too. Geogriff's proportions aren't my favorite, but I'm sure Grizzlet would become very popular. Fairy. Some would say it's the opposite of dragons. But we have another dragon with Mamis Art's lovely Magistrake line for the naval region. Keep in mind, this is a dragon fairy type Pokemon, but our wonderful artist here has decided to incorporate the association between fairies and bugs. After all, stereotypical fairies are inspired by bugs, so it's cool to utilize that aspect for the fairy type, instead of slapping on the bug type on it. The color schemes are mesmerizing, the proportions are very appropriate for the franchise. I'd personally give Magistrake a less insect-like mouth, like its Prevos, but as a Pokemon, it's hard to beat. This unnamed and unfinished ribbon eel is an honorable mention too, by the way. Unfortunately, it's incomplete. Genius concept though. Flying. 
Yes, we have Salamence and Dragonite before him, but those are flying by default, and thanks to them, we're in this Dragon-type mess of a group. So finally, I picked the flying ground-type Seismogriff. It looks like Griffins are definitely the mythical creatures that Fakemon artists are taking the most inspiration for their pseudo-legendary designs. Aside from Dragon, of course. But while its design was utilized for multiple projects under multiple names, I'm a huge fan of how it's based on the Burrowing Owl. Good justification for the ground type, and a nice deviation from standard Griffin. The style is very western cartoon-like, but it's still a strong Fakemon design. This would be an instant cop in many people's playthrough. Water Loxton's War Cane, made by Elisteva, is fantastic, but the Cascade region doesn't need my promotion, so Virgolfus's Pegasus is my pick. This entire line was incepted once I told Virgo I was making this video, and she decided to work her magic. A seahorse that becomes a Kelpie and then a Pegasus, all tying together with various water horses in mythology and biology, while showing an evolution from sea to land to sky is pretty clever. The lines, shapes, and silhouettes of these Pokemon are masterfully done too. One of the best in this video. Fire. Again, I could use Subjectively's Perahotal, but y'all have already seen that, so I picked probably the most underrated pseudo online since it has never really digitized or even named. But Pink Palkia's line is a great example of how Fakemon could look like a real Pokemon with the, all the design philosophies that Game Freak utilizes, even without using modern technology. This line is based on Yu-Gi-Oh's Meteor Dragon. The first member of the line is so cute and friendly, the middle stage is pretty cool looking, and the final Evo ties it all back to the concept of meteors with a stellar color scheme. So check out Pink Palkia's newest work too. Grass. It's my time to shine. I looked everywhere, but there are not that many grass type pseudos that I was satisfied with at least. And as you noticed in the first half of the video, many Fakemon artists still conform to the existing draconic designs of pseudo legendaries. So the first two pseudo legendary lines I'm gonna make will be Grass Dragon, based on the Pitaya or Dragon Fruit. Since these fruits come from Central America, I'll, I'll add some Aztec inspired shapes and Quetzalcoatl traits into the final evolution. I'm always insecure when I say Quetzalcoatl, because I mean, I could say it Quetzalcoatl, but I don't have time for that. This will be a more traditional looking pseudo, while my second line will look nothing like any other pseudos. So take a gander at Pitike, the hatchling Pokemon. Pitike are friendly and brave. Their tough leaf scales protect their aromatic center. The flesh of a Pitike smells incredibly sweet. This aroma attracts predators, but due to its amiable disposition, Pitike is always accompanied by friends who can help it fight back. It does not have any seeds to fire, so Pitike quickly learns how to fight at close range by utilizing its sharp leaves and fangs. It has the abilities Leaf Guard and Sweet Veil. This line's shiny is based on the other varieties of dragon fruit too. I think this was super successful at conveying the look of a traditional pseudo-legendary. Its color scheme is one of my favorites as well. But at level 35, Pitaiki balls into Rhyndrake, the fruit Pokemon. Rhyndrake's hide is incredibly tough. No predator can penetrate Rhyndrake's shell as seeds begin to mature inside of its pouches. Rhyndrake's bite is acidic, and the juice that it produces is incredibly sour. This sturdy Pokemon is carefree and buoyant. This design took me th the longest to finalize since there really isn't any Pokemon with the type of shell Rhyndrake has. It's a bit awkward, but so is any middle stage that'll eventually evolve into a super sick final Evo. At level 50, Rhyndrake evolves into Pentaya, the fruitful Pokemon from Serpent, Pendragon, and Pitaya. Pentaya are benevolent and strong-willed. They will offer their fruit to any hungry or injured Pokemon, but show no mercy to those who injure others. Their fruit is perfectly balanced taste-wise and nutritionally. It launches its sharp leaf feathers to attack, but can also fire a concentrated blast of acid and seeds that is stored within its belly. It can break boulders with its headbutts and subdue entire packs with the sweep of its tail and swipe of its claws. This magnificent beast was once thought to be a god in ancient civilizations. It has the abilities Leaf Guard and the hidden ability Seed Sower. I've wanted to see a dragon fruity Pokemon for so long, and I'm so glad I finally made one with one of my favorite color schemes. I was afraid I wouldn't be able to top very Lurk, the pseudo legendary I made from my Son region, but I definitely think they rival each other. And to the theorizers in the audience, no, this is not going to be a Mexican region. Bug. Bromo Jumbo's unnamed pseudos are the bee's knees, and kind of what we're looking for, but let's cool it down with the dragons in the second half of the video. Don Pablo's Toxapin is just what we're looking for. While the end result is slightly more complicated than I personally endorse, it's still a super sick design. The point of most pseudos is to look dangerous, and what's cooler than taming such a deadly looking beast? I love the rendering of this fake mon too, very nice shading. Some of my favorite prevos in this video too. The evolutionary progression is very solid. Psychic. One of my favorites that I've seen in the entire online space is Medioko by Jenna Johnson. Jenna's got skills, and it's super cool to see such a different take on a pseudo. A line of moles based on shooting stars, and the psychic electric type is very welcomed. It's an inspiring design, a very pretty family. Honestly, the kind of design I would make, I mean, right up my alley. Steel. 
Now, obviously, for the previous and upcoming category, my favorite pseudo legendary Pokemon, Metagross, has dominated and is, as of now, the most creative pseudo. Joshua Dunlop's uh, Griffkane line is a contender, but we already have so many Griffins. So I picked Tigreox family to represent Steel. Behind dragons and Griffins, it, it seems like large cats are the next most uh, used inspiration for uh, pseudo legendaries. After all, tigers are the pseudo legendaries of the real world. The color scheme EJ gave this line is mesmerizing, and the inspiration, the Indonesian Ryog dance is as cultured as an origin can get. Poison! Dark and Windy's Fatal line is super unique. Of course, it's a dragon, but how often do we get to see furry dragons in Pokemon? This toxic mouth Pokemon is a mix between a dragon and a cat, a perfect manifestation of the fake mon we've seen so far. It's very interesting to see what trends people are following, too. Fatal's colors and patterns definitely scream danger, very important for a poison type. Dark. Now obviously Viralurk, the pseudo I made years ago, dominates the poison and now dark category, but I actually found another worthy candidate. Other than High Dragon, of course. An artist astray's Devoudon. It's exactly what I think a mammalian pseudo legendary would look like. It's based on werewolves and the beast of Gavadon. I don't know how to pronounce I don't know if I pronounced that right. I assume it's Gevaudon. It's basically a wolf-like cryptid from France. It also has the same face the big bad wolf is traditionally drawn to have in early 20th century animations. The entire line is very well designed. Some of the best in the video. Honestly, flawless. Ground. It's hard to rival even a quarter of Garchomp's popularity, but after looking for weeks, I found Pokemon Uranium's Lysher, one of the two pseudos in this fan game. It probably looks the least like a pseudo legendary, but successfully looks special and powerful. We need more pseudos like this. It's a more eastern looking jackalope with ram horns instead of, you know, deer horns? And tails that cause earthquakes. It's a Pokemon anybody would want on their team. Ice. Excalibur is relatively controversial, so what about my pick? Yberian. You'll notice soon that the next most popular trend is straight up humanoid savages as pseudo legendaries. For some reason, the obligatory dragon type was tacked on, but it doesn't change how good the design is. An igloo ogre is definitely something I need to see. And even though no existing pseudos look like this, it's pretty easy to tell what group this monster belongs to. Ghost. It's impossible to beat Dragapult, so I went in a completely different direction and included Behemoth. Taphead, or Expert Discount on Reddit, posted this spooky line meant to mimic Gen 3 sprite art. I'd say it's successful. This ghostly relic becoming an eerie hominid is pretty scary, but the simplicity of the design is also very nostalgic and therefore comforting. Normal. The absolute toughest type to find, so I thought I'd take a crack at making a pure normal humanoid line of pseudo-legendary Pokemon based on the proboscis monkey, before I turned a pretty fruit into a majestic dragon. But now I'm going to take this silly looking monkey that makes various sounds with its nose and turn it into a serious beast. The entire line will have the, the theme of musical skill. Each member will be based on a different woodwind instrument. It'll go from a little monkey prodigy into a, a raging ape with the power to summon the sound of an entire orchestra. So, say hi to Probogy, the note Pokemon, from Proboscis and Prodigy. Probogy are born with a love of music. They have perfect rhythm and strut around to the beat in their head. On their leisurely strolls, they exhale through their nose, creating pleasant whistles that put others at ease. Probogy are well-mannered and pride themselves in their abilities, but will attack if their music is not appreciated. They can produce nausea-inducing notes when Probogy feels threatened. They have the ability Soundproof and Technician. This dude is cute. I based it on young Mozart, a prodigy with powdered hair and cuff-like patterns on its wrists. Notice the kazoo-like nose and flute-like tail, and how that tail will grow as Probogy evolves. At level 37, Probogy evolves into Oboscus, the melody Pokemon. Oboscus' nose produces a wider range of sounds. This Pokemon likes to experiment with the music it creates using its nose. The melodies it plays seem too complex to the average listener. In battle, it confuses foes with its music. Oboscus is even able to manipulate the air with its fingers, creating melodies from the wind. Notice how its nose is now more of a flute and its tail modeled after a clarinet and oboe. The whole concept is that now my dude is a grown-up prodigy whose work is more scrutinized. It dabbles in music only masters can appreciate and make, like freeform jazz. But as it evolves, it'll be on his comeback tour, based on older classical musicians like uh, Beethoven. At level 52, Oboscus evolves into Thrashendo, the chord Pokemon.
from thrash and crescendo. Thrashendo can produce a plethora of sound from their multi-chambered nose and hollow tail. Their music can be heard from 10 miles away. They are consumed by the sound they make. Thrashendo seems vindictive of those who did not appreciate the music it produced early in life. Thrashendo's powerful arms can tear their earth in two. It drums on the ground as it plays what sounds like an entire orchestra from its nose and tail. It bears its soul and will share how it feels using the music it, ma it makes from its body. This Pokemon saxophone tail and red tie goatee tied all together in my opinion. It looks like a conductor that hulked out. I know he's ugly, but music can be ugly and powerful. It can make us cry ugly tears. Music is personally the most powerful thing in my life, so I decided to make a Pokemon that is the manifestation of its primal power. It contrasts well with the beautiful Pentaya. Leave a like if you appreciate them too, and subscribe to know when I make more Pokemon for my upcoming region. Check the description for all the artists showcased today, and consider becoming a patron or clicking the join button to get cool rewards like seeing videos days early and a huge discount on the t-shirts I made for you guys. Follow me on Twitter where I post sneak peeks and final art of these Pokemon too. Bye!